Here's what we're going to do. You've, um, most of you have heard me talk about personas, which uh, if you haven't, it's basically a small group or individual um, group of people that would buy or sell real estate. So I'm talking about first-time home buyers. I'm talking about first-time home sellers. Um, I'm talking about investors, you know, people that are getting divorced. Basically, what I'm trying to do is get you to target, and the whole thing within the next two hours will make a whole lot of sense. So that's the key, is that at first you'll be like, yeah, but what if I alienate this person or alienate that person? The idea isn't to alienate anybody. It's to use that specificity to stand out as a specialist for one group over another. And you'll see, once we start getting into week three and week four, how quickly you can start to appear on Facebook and on Google with prominence for that group of people, okay? Also, I'm all, along that same side, I'm going to um, teach you how to max out your um, overall influence in one city, okay? So one of the first things we're gonna do in the book is we're going to go through and we're going to choose a city that if you started to become the face of that city for real estate, what city would that be? And we'll get into the worksheets as we go. But those are the two kind of things that I wanna do. And here's the reason I do it. If you're going to stand out, especially online, whether it be on Facebook and especially on Google, which I'm gonna spend a lot of time trying to get you to rank on Google as well. Um, if you're going to rank for anything or if you're going to stand out for anything online, it has to be in a specific way. You can't just general, like I'm the best agent in all of Monmouth County. It doesn't work like that, okay? If you're going to rank for anything, you have to rank in specificity. All right, now some, some people, um, we're, well, I'll wait till we get into the personas for that, okay? The way to rank and the way to get there is actually to use YouTube videos, but don't be afraid, you don't actually have to appear on the videos. In fact, it's almost better if you don't, okay? Um, so if you're deathly afraid of video, it's okay. You're not gonna have to, um, you know, be the, the face on the camera unless you want to. All right, so. So what we need to do is we need to max out on our contact acquisition, and we're gonna talk about um, contact acquisition as opposed to lead acquisition in a minute. We also want to make sure that we follow up until they yell stop, okay? If someone hasn't yelled at you telling you to stop, it means they're still in your line. They can still be converted. If they didn't want you to contact them any longer, they would tell you to stop. So assume that every contact you have inside of a system is not a lead, which we're going to get into in a second, but every contact you have will be a contact until they tell you to stop. All right? And we are going to annoy them until they yell stop because that's what's required in real estate anymore. Everybody in our area is far too accessible for us to just give up right away, all right? The same, we all have common friends on Facebook. We can all rank on Google um, for videos, all that. So you have to continue to contact. Case in point, one of the last listings I had, I had well over 50 people walk through um, my open houses. I just looked the other day because I finally found the sheets. I lost them, okay? Here I am, I'm the teacher of all of this. I lost the sheets. Guess how many of the people on those sheets said they were not working with an agent out of the 50-ish? 27. 27. <coughs> From one listing in one open house over the course of several weeks, I could have leveraged for 21 tra or 27 transactions. I could have said, you know what, I'm going into referral eventually, which I've known for a long time. I could have referred all that business out to you guys. Every single person in this room could have had one of those leads from me. Shame on me. Really. Shame on me. 
but that's the kind of power that you have when you have systems in place to be able to leverage what you're going to do and know that you have to follow up with these people because your business depends on it. Okay? You'll have access to all the steps that you need. You'll have access to the technology you need. Now all you have to have is you. And if, if push comes to shove and we're not able to convert, it's technically not going to be the technology. It's not going to be the systems in place. It's going to be us. That's when we need to link up with a productivity coach or somebody that can help you get over the hump to start converting what you work so hard to attain in the first place. Okay? So, how are we going to do this? And for those of you that just came in, did anyone order the workbooks online? Okay, let me hand them out. And if you want one, I can give you one now and you can pay for it after. Um, you get two books for $34. The other book will be in next week. So, if you didn't, um, there's worksheets. Nancy ran a few extra. I think they're on the back table. So, the same sheets that are in here, um, are available to you back there. You. Yes. Do you want one? Okay. So how are we going to acquire contacts? We're going to acquire contacts via Facebook posts and ads. I'm going to walk through that. That'll happen in week three. We're going to acquire through Instagram and other posts. We're going to acquire through email and texts. We're going to use YouTube videos and open houses. Now, open houses going forward are going to be critically important. So if you hate doing open houses, unfortunately, you're going to have to. All right? It's the quickest route right now to the business. And people right now are out looking for a home almost before they list their home. Because we're still shifted a little bit in the market where people are they want to find the place they're moving to because they know if they price it right, the house is going to be gone within two to three weeks. If they price right. Right? So people are on the prowl first before they're even choosing a listing agent. So in order to get the listings right now, you're going to have to be in front of the buyers. And in order to be in front of the buyers, you've got to do open houses. But that also means that you've got to have some systems and, and accountability in place in order to get those contacts, get them into a system, and keep firing at them until they tell you to stop. Right? Next. So, for follow-up, text message is a huge winner. So if you don't love being on the phones, text messages is your route to the cash. I promise you. You know who the favorite text people are right now? I, I ran um, 700 leads for the over, five, uh, over 55 communities in the last month and a half. Guess how many of them responded to text messages? 55. 55 and over. <laughs> she said 55 and <laughs> Oh. 55 responded. Oh yeah, no, 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 55 and over population. Guess how many responded to the text messages? Over phone calls. Half of them. Yes, more than half. There are people that refuse to pick up their phone if they do not recognize the number, but they will have a 10 to 20 point conversation with you via text. That's wonderful for those of you that hate being on the phones. Text messaging, it, it opens the doors. Because if they don't want to respond, they don't have to. But if they think that it's an okay situation, then they'll respond. And I'm going to teach you when we get into the follow-up messaging, how to open up the line of communication without seeming too salesy. Because that's what people don't want, really. They think you're going to just sail them to death. Well, are we, we want to be human with people. We want to engage them in a relationship before we try and sell them anything. All right? So, emails. You've heard me say this before. Um, it, we all complain about our email rates. No one ever responds, right? Here's the key. If you're using Gmail or AOL, less, or if you're sending to a Gmail account or an AOL account, I promise you less than half of the emails you're sending are actually getting to people. Because Gmail and AOL filters now are, are so tight and so high 
that it's nearly impossible unless you've communicated with them in the past, it's nearly impossible to, for your emails to actually get through. Does that count for Yahoo too? Uh, Yahoo I don't track because the majority of the emails still out there are, um, are AOL and Gmail. Gmail, if it gets through, it's going to the promotions or the updates tab, which no one ever looks at because on mobile, most people don't even know where to find it. So it's not even that it's going to spam, it's that people are using their mobile now and if they don't see it pop up in the inbox, they just don't know it's there. So we take it as agents to say, oh, they just don't want to talk to us. Well, that's not true. It's that Gmail put it into a category for us on our behalf that we didn't need or want it to go to. And yet we give up, right? We're like, oh, we sent them three emails, they didn't respond, Psh, I'm out. Text message. More than 90% of the text messages you send will actually land where they're supposed to land. And if they land on the phone, 100% of those people will know they got a text message and they will read it. Not necessarily will they respond, but at least you know the eyes were on the message that you sent. That's why text messaging is critical. All right? Because email is, it, it's just not trustworthy. Not anymore. And especially AOL. If you send to an AOL and you've never spoken to them before, it's in spam. I sent out, it, I had a meeting last week in Long Island pitching um, RCS. Eight of the 12 agents that were at the meeting had AOL accounts. All eight of them, from my personal Gmail account, all eight of them didn't get my emails. Everyone else did. I wasn't even using like an email service. They just went straight to spam. It, just understand, if somebody fills out the sheet and they've got an AOL account, just sigh and ask them if they've got some other way to contact them because AOL, out. <coughs> okay, yeah, you had a question. So our KW email? It doesn't matter. That's yep. Gmail. It doesn't matter. Yeah, because it's underwritten by, by Gmail. It's part of the G Suite. Yep. Okay. Doesn't matter, unfortunately. So uh, I hope the light bulb goes on for you a little bit there where, where you understand that it's not that people don't want to hear from you. It's literally they may not know that you actually reached out to them. So that's why phone call becomes important and that's why text message becomes important. All right? Facebook Messenger. How many of you guys use Facebook Messenger? Okay? Excellent. I'm going to teach you in uh, probably week three-ish that when somebody comments, likes, or shares on a post that you've done, which doesn't cost any money, I want you to message them on Facebook. Personally. Just thank them for liking, commenting, and sharing and say how much that imp that means to the support of your business. You'd be surprised what they'll tell you and not tell you. That leads to then a referral conversation about, hey, any, any chance you know anybody that's looking to buy or sell right now? Would love to help them. Okay? Some, just something simple like that. Um, comments on social media, same kind of thing. And uh, the 30 stage follow-up sequence that I always use. I have multiple different sequences, some for open houses, some for cold leads, some for um, warm leads, lots of different ones. Okay, I lay it all out for you. You have access to all the messages. You can tweak them as you go. But the idea is that you don't magically have to create it in your mind. You're going to have access to it so that at that point, all it is is accountability with yourself that I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to do it because I don't have to make anything up. I just have to follow the steps. How many of you guys bake? Right? Do you, uh, you use recipes? Mm -hmm. Okay. This workbook, almost start to finish, is the recipe on how to succeed through all of this. If you just follow the steps that are laid out before you, you will succeed. But the key is that you have to follow the steps and you've got to do the work. Okay. So, I'm going to skip right ahead to, oh, I'm going the wrong direction. Okay. First worksheet. Um, and if you're in the book, I think it's page 20. Yes. You know, if, uh, you know, we get those marketing calls also, and we block the number. Yep. When we call, and the phone just rings, and, and 
like a minute later, it just it just went dead. Yeah. It didn't go to the message. It didn't. Yep. Up, it just went blank. Is that because they blocked us? Yeah. You know why? Have you guys ever heard me talk about RoboKiller before? They it's the that. number one most trending app and has been for almost six months. It basically sees that you've been ranked as a cold caller in the past. It goes into their system so it automatically tags your number as a cold calling number. So if anyone has listed you, had an app like that, that's a block type app, and listed you as a cold caller, you're now in the cold calling database. So when you make a phone call to them, chances are they're not even hearing their phone ring. It just goes straight to voicemail or it gets blocked altogether and just rings, 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 rings. RoboKiller is one. There's plenty of apps. The nice thing about RoboKiller, if you ever want to download it, it's very cool actually. Um, it will actually answer the phone call and there's pre-recorded um, people in the, uh, in the app that will have a conversation with you as the salesperson. And they'll switch languages on you. They'll be like, oh, let me go get my mom or let me go get my dad or it's like crazy, okay? A friend of mine is, is the, um, the business developer for the company that makes it. And he's, he literally tours the country now um, going on Fox News, going on CNBC. Go, it's the number one hottest app. So, and a text doesn't go through either then? Well, uh, text might. Text might? Right, okay. but as soon as your phone rings, it just triggers all sorts of stuff. Yeah? Um, I was just a couple minutes late. I just want to ask one question, something like this. I saw a slide that says, do, don't talk. Is that something you covered already? Um, uh, do, don't talk. I just saw it. It was like a big slide. Oh, 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 yes. Yeah, what was that? The object is, is that we have to decide to do it, not just talk about it. Oh, just like that. Okay. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Because. <laughs> Let's face it, right? Me included with the open house, big offender. We always talk a good game, but then when it comes down to doing it, we're like, eh, you know, it's Tuesday. I, I don't have to make calls on Tuesdays, you know? Tuesdays are beach day. <laughs> so, you know, I can't make calls on Tuesdays, right? So that's, I mean, we rationalize all, all sorts of stuff. So the idea is if we're going to get results, we actually have to do something to get those results. All right, that's what that was about. All right, so let's talk about the cities. I'm making you for, if no other reason right now, for demonstration purposes, I'm making you choose the city that if you could do every buy or sell transaction in one city in our area, I want you to write down what that city would be. If you could be famous as a realtor in that one city, what city would it be? Now, what's that? Of course, yeah. And next, in one sentence, describe why you chose that city. And it can be for any number of reasons, whether it be real estate related or non-real estate related. And list the top five reasons or uh, the top five favorite things about that city. And again, whether it's real estate related or social related, it doesn't matter. I just want to know why you chose the city and what your favorite things are about that city. It can be anywhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, one of the agents on Monday actually chose a, a city I'd never heard of in Union County before because that's where she grew up. And I guess eventually she wants to move back there. So. So, 
Let's talk about um, somebody who wants to volunteer their city. Sandra. Uh, I chose Manalapan. Okay, so we've got Manalapan. And what were your top five reasons that you like Manalapan or you chose Manalapan? Well, I live here, so I'm very familiar with it. Okay, so you live here. It's a great family neighborhood. Family. Good schools. Schools. Convenient to the beaches, to New York City. Okay. Airport. So convenience. Last one. Good shopping. Ooh, shopping. I'm glad you chose that. All right. So, what's the purpose in doing all this? I'm going to tell you right now. You are going to learn in weeks four and five that for any video that you can create related to a city, related to some of these things and more, which we're going to get into, that you can start to begin to show up on the first page of Google by using video for any of these topics. Okay? So, why is this important? Let's talk about schools. How many schools are in Manalpin? What do you think? I think... So, alright, let's just say there are six, there could be 20, who knows? Okay? If you grew up in Manalapan or you know people with children in Manalapan that use Manalapan schools, if you were to record even a text-based video without you being on the physical video and reference that school numerous times and in the description on Google and in the title, I'm sorry, in YouTube, and in the title and the description both, you mention that school and links to that school's website, and then, at the end, you put your realtor details in with a, a link to your website. Guess what would happen? Everybody that would Google the name of that school would eventually see your video for that school on the first page of Google. Now, why is that important? How many buyers visit our area from Staten Island in New York City? At least one. Okay. For a minute. How many of them do you think, before buying in Manalapan or Marlboro or Morganville, Google the name of the schools that their children will go to? Probably all of them. Probably all of them. How amazing would it be if your video showed up on the first page of Google as you are the source, and if you want to know about Manalapan Elementary School, give me a call. I can vouch for the school. My kids went there. My sister's kids went there. If you want to know anything about Manalapan Middle School, you give me a call. I'll tell you all about it. Oh, and by the way, I can show you all of the available homes in Manalapan. See, see the link here? You're not steering. All you're doing is giving information. You're, you're the helpful person. So you're not saying, hey, if you're from Staten Island in Brooklyn, you have to live in Manalapan because I said you need to. <laughs> it's not that. You're just giving information. You're also going to do features on other schools. You're going to do features possibly in Morganville. You're not steering anyone anywhere. You're just, you're basically being a journalist. And you're saying, here's my link. If you're interested in looking at homes, just click this link and you'll forward right over my website. Okay? Now, obviously, don't get into steering type language where you're like, this is the only community in the world for X. If you are ethnicity of X, you need to live here. Uh, obviously, you're going to get dinged for that. Okay? <coughs> but I think we're all of the mindset that we need to not do that. Okay? Now, let me say this because I always forget. If you want to stand out even further, if you speak another language, do your videos in the native language that, or the other languages that you speak. All right? We don't all have to speak English, thank goodness, in this country. Diversity is a wonderful thing. And tell me, if you meet somebody that speaks a, a language that you speak, how much of a connection and a kinship do you feel to them? 
almost instantly if you can communicate in, an, in a language other than English. So, you can record an English version, you can record a, a, a language version. It will rank. Okay? So I just want to point that out because once a lot of people start to get into doing this, now you have to, you know, pivot to the things that will make you stand out and create these connections. So, do that. I think I, it, Nancy, I think I saw it was maybe one of your posts you helped an agent because they had a, um, a, a buyer from, you know, the country you grew up in or a language that you spoke. That's amazing, you know? Nancy could probably have a whole business based on people that don't speak English because she help, she's a helpful person that knows a language other than just English. That's a good thing. That's how we grow businesses. Doesn't mean we're alienating anyone or discriminating against anyone. It's just saying, listen, if you wanna, if you wanna relate to somebody, I can relate to you. Because I speak your language. All right, so that's schools. Shopping. We'll get into this in week three. Shopping and restaurants are some of the highest Google type searches for any city, especially restaurants. We're gonna go through that in just a second. Here's the thing, if you have favorite restaurants or favorite shopping places, it's so easy to go and shoot a picture of the front of their restaurant, tell them what your favorite food there is, and that you vouch for the great service and all that kind of stuff, and then in the description, you have a link to your realtor website. And guess what happens? The next time somebody wants Esposito's Pizza in Matawan and they Google Esposito's Pizza, guess who shows up on the first page of Google for Esposito's Pizza? You, with your video. And it's cost you nothing but your time. All right, next. You live here, gives you authority. You've got family that grew up here. Again, it's something you can talk about. Convenience to the city. You want to prove to somebody that you really can get from Manalapan to New York City in X amount of time? Do one of those time lapse videos <laughs> that 30 seconds you're like zoop, 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 right into Manhattan and say, see? That, how easy was that? Okay? You could show pictures of the towns along the way and in the description say, I went through this city, I went through that city, I went through this city, I went through that city, I'm now in Manhattan 45 minutes. You can live here too and enjoy the commute back and forth. Enjoy, right? Enjoy the commute back and forth. All right, you, you get my drift? See what happens here? Now, I know some of you already use video because I see it on Facebook. If you took those same videos and started posting them to YouTube, titled them correctly and put in the descriptions correctly, guess what it would do for you? It would start to build a following for you and you're doing no extra work than you're already doing right now. Now, some of you, um, at some of, a lot of you are friends of mine on Facebook. Did anyone see the, the post I just put out that had the Middletown home values? Okay, yeah. 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 if I had you guys right now for Middletown, New Jersey, Google that term, Middletown, New Jersey home values, who do you think would show up one, two, three, four, and five in the search for that? term? Not yet. Would say? <laughs> who do you think? Who are the big, who are the, the behemoths online when it comes to real estate? Zillow, oh. Trulia, Redfin, Redfin Realtor.com, Realtor Market Leader. Market Leader. Okay. You're going to see a lot, a lot of those on the first page of Google. So, I put out this video with spelling mistakes with nothing really but 15 minutes worth of my time and guess what was on the first page within an hour of me putting it on YouTube my video saying if you want what's my house worth in Middletown New Jersey it's powerful so that ranked me right up there with Zillow with Realtor.com, with all of those things, and I did nothing. I didn't appear on the video if you watched it. All it was was stats, market stats, that's it. 
it, it was a nice looking video, but it's, it, you guys have the, the same opportunity to do the same thing. And it costs me zero dollars. I didn't boost it. I didn't do anything. In the post on, on Facebook, I asked people, if you wouldn't mind just clicking, watching the link, I just need some eyes on this video. I just need to test it. Within an hour, page one, number five. Okay, now, some of the other terms I wanted to rank for, I didn't get there, it was on page two. Will it ever be seen on page two? Probably not. But if enough people click it over time, guess what happens? It pops up on page one. But how long does it stay on there? You just have to continue to generate some views. Typically what I say is, even if you go once a day, or once every other day and just click on it, that's what YouTube wants. They just want to see that there's some extra views. And Google owns YouTube, by the way. So whatever you put on YouTube, it, it starts to rank almost immediately on Google. Bless you. Also your properties, folks. If you've got listings, you can do the exact same, use the exact same recipe that I give you and your properties will rank on page one on Google. And what will happen is with just the property tours from Motion City, from all the things you've already been given or just a slideshow you present, which I'll tell you what software to use, you can be up there and let's say you've got 10 or 15 or 20 of those videos all ranking on the first page, guess what happens? Google gives you now authority just like they give Zillow authority. Zillow could write the most obnoxious blog post ever and it would start to rank on page one because they've got thousands of rankings on page one. It doesn't even have to be true, it would still rank because they have authority over time. So, why am I spending so much time on this? Because it's rare that many of us are just made of flowing trees that grow cash. Okay? We can't spend thousands of dollars on ads. So we need to come up with alternative ways that we can use our time and our effort in a strategic way in order to at least get ourselves in place so that people have the opportunity to see us. Video is absolutely number one when it comes to that. All right, so next page over. Uh, for our target cities, the top 21 things, and we're not gonna go through every single one of these, but the top 21 things that typically pop up <coughs> when someone searches would be weather, news, and news outlets, the top three restaurants in the city, movies, mortgage and lenders, um, community events, cars, auto sales, schools, pizza, the list goes on. You could, one time per week, choose any of the uh, items in this list and do a brief video on it, just talking about even the details of it, and pretty soon you're going to end up ranking for almost every single one of those. Because no one ever does video. So the object is that we, in the description, we're going to benefit as people read it, they're going to see our name and they're going to click. Because it's going to be out of towners, it's going to be in towners. The object is, is we want to rank for as many things in our city as possible so that it literally looks like everywhere. We're everywhere. Now, side note, for restaurants especially and small business owners, choose the ones that already rank on Google and start with them. Call them and say, you know what? I'm a real estate specialist in Manalapan. You are my favorite pizza place. I'd like to come in and just have a chat with you. I'd like to shoot some pictures inside. I'd like to just create a little show. I'd like to put it up on YouTube and, and be able to share with people that are coming in from out of town that you're my favorite pizza place. How many pizza owner places are gonna tell you no? <laughs> right, so then you get ranked on page one, which will happen almost immediately. And then you go back in the next week and you say, oh my gosh, this thing just totally took off. Here's the Facebook thread saying everyone loves you. Here's the ranking on page one for Google. You're gonna get some, some nice press out of this. Would you mind if I left some business cards on your counter? You think they're gonna say no? They won't. 
because people have already done it and nobody has said no. I tell people, if they say no, let me know because I want to know how many people say no. And they don't. Because even as humans, they don't want to say no because you just gifted them with free publicity. Of course they're going to bend over backwards for you. Now you've got another place to put your business cards that you didn't have the opportunity before. Now for those of you that are in B&I groups and different um, you know, it, charity organizations, whatever, you can use that to do the same kind of thing. The object is where can I get my business cards into that are going to get picked up and that they're going to stay there and I may be the only one. The only conflict you may have is if some restaurant owner also has their real estate license or they, a close family friend or something else has it. All right, at that point, it, it is what it is. All right, and I promise you, you're looking at 15 minutes to 30 minutes of your time and now you've got another opportunity for referrals. And I mean, for the amount of busyness that we have in our lives, especially in this county, people eat out all the time. Your cards will be seen, they will be picked up. And it's free publicity. And it stays on Google forever. Okay? So, you can go through those lists. We're going to tackle them a little bit more as we go. And you said not to have yourself on the video. It might be a. It might backfire if you have your face on the video. Okay, so that's a good question. Nancy says. Do I appear on the video or not? Will it backfire if I'm on the video or not? Here's what I say. If you're nervous and will appear nervous on the video, then just use moving pictures, words, and slides, and music, and make it just happen. Because here's the thing. Very few people will care whether you're on the video or not. Google definitely doesn't care. YouTube doesn't even know if you're on the video. Okay? They don't know if it's a dog on the video or uh, pictures of um, a, an elephant. They don't know. All they know is the description that you tell them, okay? <coughs> you could literally have a blank screen and if it ranked, Google would be like, sure, I'll put it out there. They, they don't know, okay? They can't tell what's physically moving on the screen. You're telling them in the description what's physically moving on the screen. So, if you don't mind being on the video, then definitely be on it. You can even say a five minute intro and then go into videos and slides. We could all probably manage at least a five second. I, I said five minute, I meant five second. Okay? Five second intro. We could all manage that, right? Hey, I'm standing outside of Esposito's Peach. I just wanted to come in and show you around. Boom. That's it. Then go in and show them around. Whether you're talking or not, or whether there's music going, whether it's the clanging of dishes, it doesn't matter. The idea is, is that what you're writing in the title and the description is what's going to rank, not the video itself. All right. Same way, we're going to move on to the next one because this is super important. So um, do slides and voice and text okay. Video. We're going to get into that. I have um, a whole sheet here called the Agent Marketer Toolbox. I'm going to tell you what to download in order to do it. And you, you probably, you don't have to spend money even. There's free apps out there for that. Yeah. How long should the video be? No more, excellent question. No more. Any Facebook video should be less than one minute. People will tune out after 25 seconds on Facebook unless it's a killer video, which we'll talk about in week four. YouTube, on the other hand, they like videos that are actually more in the two to three minute range if they're getting good analytics. So what I tell everybody is, Make your videos less than a minute and 20 seconds. And they'll fit in both places and you won't be, you know, making anybody angry on either side. Instagram is 60 seconds. Instagram will limit you to 60 seconds, yes. Unless you do Oh, yes, the IGTV. Yep, yep. So. Um, less than minute? Yeah, if you can keep it to less than one minute, it'll go on every platform and, and be just great. I, the Middletown Home Values one that I just threw together to get stats for, uh, it was a minute and 23 seconds. So, and it made it to page one quick. So, all right. Uh, if you've got the workbook, page 27, if you're on the sheets, um, go to the persona. In the same way that we just went through all of the city type stuff, 
I also want you to choose one group of buyers or sellers that if there were 50 of them waiting out in the hallway and all 50 wanted to work with you, what would they look like? Who would they be? What, what group? So I'm not talking about ethnicity, I'm not talking about all of that. What I'm talking about is would they be first time home sellers? Would they be first time buyers? Tell me, tell me what those people would, um, would they would be. And we'll get into why in a second. If you want a, a list, there's a list at the bottom of that page. And even if you don't know just yet, just pick one for informational purposes so that I can walk you through the process. Okay, so you've got somebody picked out. If not, just randomly choose one so that we can get through the exercise. Next page over, you've got a sideways um, worksheet. That's the one we're gonna fill out, the one that looks like this. All right, now, in the box it says picture. If you're the doodling type while you're trying to, um, you know, think of things to say, just doodle a picture of what they might look like. All right, <laughs> that's just for fun. It's the only fun thing in the whole book, <laughs> all right? Um, what's their current job, title, or role in life? So what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and say, okay, this first time home buyer is so-and-so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you profile these people because in the end, by the time we get done with the sheet, you're gonna probably have a list of 20 to 30 videos that you could shoot just for that group of people. All right, so. What's their current job or title in life? And there's no right or wrong answers to any of this. What's their demographic information? And remember, these are the people that you would love to work with. <laughs> love. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> What's their educational background? And even, even if you don't know, just make something up. And approximately in this time in their life, what do you think their current income might be? This is just a guess, right? Yep, just a guess. <laughs> and if they have any special quotes or sayings or ways they talk or don't talk, Write that down, and I'll get into why. And what do they read? What do they watch? What are their hobbies? Where do they take their kids? Anything related to, um, you know, their social uh, outreach. We should answer, ask all these questions on the buyer consultation. You could actually. It'd be good for demographic information. This is more to profile people, and I'll tell you where this comes right in uh, once we fill out the rest of the sheet. Again, what if you're meeting someone for the first time? Yeah, no, no, no. This is something you do in advance of. Yeah, yeah. this isn't like a interview type sheet right. or anything like that. Yeah. Okay, go down to the bottom four boxes. What are their roles in life? Are they a mom? Are they a dad? Are they a caregiver for an aging parent? Are they, get into some of that stuff.
What are their current responsibilities and their life goals? And our life goals change, right? A lot over the course of time. And this is a big one. What are their challenges? I'm even going to say um, some can be personal. Most try make it their real estate challenges right now. Money. Yeah, a lot of people, right? Open credit. Okay. And what are their real estate goals? All right, so whatever you didn't finish, you can finish. Um, again, this is why you've got the workbook so that you can kind of spend a little more time with this. Who chose a first time home buyer here? All right, Angela. What did you put for their current job title? Um, in technology. Okay, good. Uh, what did you put for demographic info? Anything? I did, but I crossed it out. Okay. And I changed it. But do I have to say that? You don't have to say it out loud. Let's go to educational background. College degree. Okay. Current income-ish. Between 80 to 100. Okay. Anything related to what they say? I want a deal. I want a deal. That's fun, see? What else? What in the next box? Um, what do they watch, listen to? They like to go to the door park. Okay. <laughs> they do, right? That's amazing. I wouldn't have thought of that in a million years, but you're absolutely right. Good for you. Roles in life? Uh, they're newly married, no children yet. Okay. Responsibilities and life goals? Uh, save money to way to succeed. They're not, you know, they don't like to overspend. Okay. And their challenges? Finding the perfect first home and saving money while owning the home. Good. And then what do you think their real estate goals are? Um, to buy this home and seven years later buy another one, a bigger one. Great. So life stages, right? Okay. Now, how many others chose first time home buyers? How many of Angela's list was on your list? None. Right? Because we've all met different types of first time home buyers. Here's the key to this. Every time you go to an open house, how long did that take, that process? Like what, five minutes, 10 minutes? Based on what Angela just said, how much better do you know a first time home buyer now than you knew 15 minutes ago? And in doing this exercise for yourself, how much better do you know the person that's on your page right now than you probably knew before? Now, if you're looking for conversation starters at open houses that are non-real estate intimidating, if you fill out the sheet, you'll have umpteen number of things that you can chat with people about in order to build a relationship. So when they originally told you that they're working with an agent and then on the way out, they, you now have this personal connection with them, they'll be like, oh, you know, we, we were working with that person, but we'd rather work with you. Because you made a connection. When you know people and make a connection with people, they learn to trust you and they want to become a part of your circle. It's just what happens in our humanity. Take the time to break things down. Now also, in all of this, go back to the video part, which we're gonna get into in a, in a second here, but how many of the things we just spoke about right there with Angela's list, could you probably shoot a video for and have it rank for a question that they may have that they pose on Google? <coughs> See the connection? We're going to get into that here in a second. This is the power that you have, that when you get into specifics with people, 
you can then become the specialist you're not alienating anyone else but when you say listen I'm the first time home buyer specialist here's the proof go to my YouTube channel and I've got 30 videos there on how from A to Z you can complete a transaction as a first time home buyer now is that going to appear different than somebody else that says oh yeah I love working with first time home buyers oh really what value do you have um, well, I, have, I have a daughter that's a first time home buyer okay see the difference I'm huge on saying if you're gonna show your value show your value have something of proof to show them those of you that use RCS and you've seen our 50 page marketing plan when you walk into a listing presentation with 50 pages all mapped out of how you're gonna market their home you've already shown them that you're a marketing expert you have this plan already in place numerous people have come to us and said if I didn't have the plan I wouldn't have gotten as far as I did we even had one agent that forgot and left the plan there the next agent came in who was a friend and they said the, the seller said well we're actually probably gonna go with this other agent you should see this plan they started flipping through the plan and said oh we can do that the friend got the listing guess who the friend called you. us to do the marketing plan for them okay frustrating but they weren't necessarily hiring the friend they were hiring the friend that could implement the marketing plan but they probably would have went with the other agent if they didn't leave the marketing plan behind so if you're going to show your value or talk about your value show it give them proof this is what I can do this is who I am I'm the downsizer specialist this is what I have for you prove your value by actually proving it all right so next page over top real estate problems let's use downsizers here because they're an easy target what do you think the number one problem of a downsizer is real estate related house is too big, house is too big. Okay, what do you think their second biggest problem is? Too much stuff. Too much, Too much stuff. stuff. Mm -hmm. What do you think their third biggest problem is? Payments too high. Payments too high. What do you think their fourth biggest problem is? Maintenance. Maintenance. Fifth. Can I throw one out there? How about I'm emotionally connected to this because it's all I've ever known. My family lived here. How do I get over the emotional connection of moving out? huge right yeah. now do you think they're going to Google and typing in those search terms saying how do I emotionally disconnect from my home what do I do with all this stuff is there a checklist for downsizing do you think they're going to Google and typing that stuff in mm -hmm. you bet they are yeah. if your video popped up number one on Google for the checklist for that and they lived in your area you think you'd probably get a phone call how much did it cost you Pew. zero like I said I'm not just giving you all these ideas and I'll make you just do it on your own week three and four we're gonna get into that those of you that recruit I mean listen we're KW recruiting is part of what we like to do you know the whole downline all right list their top five problems whether they're a new agent or somebody that needs to come into the system needs a better outfit like KW list the top five problems they have the top five reasons they would leave answer those in five separate videos and guess what you have you've got eyes and the beauty is is that the eyes that are watching they're not having to fill out a form yet you're building trust with them bef before you're ever really needing to do anything else the phone will ring your text will go things will happen all right because people use Google for answers Google's number one job is to give all the best answers all right so for the five problems take take just a couple minutes for the persona you chose list your top problems associated with your persona that you just chose 
And if you chose a downsizer, then we cheated for you. <laughs> Yeah, of course. There you go. <laughs> wondering. Just wondering. <laughs> Okay, so in the bottom grid, I'm just going to explain this, but I'm not going to take time to go through it. I want you to do that for homework. But in the bottom half of that sheet, this would be about taking them on an emotional journey, um, the, the persona you chose, okay? You want to introduce the problem that they have you want to somewhat exaggerate the problem or over explain the problem that they may have and then offer the solution. Okay? So in each one of the four boxes that's there, you can start to, to um, you know, really dial that in. And in your videos, as we learn, as we go through the script process later in week three or four, you're gonna understand and learn why it is that that's important to be able to use that little grid. Because in the end, here's, here's what you can associate it to. How many of you have, um, have ever watched a movie before? <laughs> okay. All movie scripts, well, I shouldn't say all, most movies follow a general thing, right? You get all the happy background in the first 15, 20 minutes, and then something happens <coughs> to the main character. And then just when you think it couldn't get worse, it gets worse. And then someone usually comes into the scene that could be the guide. And then all of a sudden it still gets worse, but then the main character decides they're gonna follow the guide, and then things start to get better, Sometimes there's a hiccup near the end, and then it's usually a happy ending at, at the end, right? And we all love the movie. What movies do we hate? The ones that don't have a happy ending. All right? Our job here is to always make sure the happy ending comes, you know, for the, uh, for the story. If you, in your videos, if you're going to be in a video and you're going to explain to somebody what a problem is and you're going to get to the answer, you want to follow this logical type movie script, the storyline, because it takes them on an emotional journey that they've seen for decades of their life, so long as they're over 30. If they're over 30, they've watched multiple movies. You don't want to get right to the good stuff at the beginning. You want to take them on the journey that they've already been on for time and time and time again. I mean, we're all addicted to movies. Uh, well, a lot of us are, okay? It's because it's a story. We want to turn our videos into stories that solve problems. That's when you make a connection, all right? I'll let you fill that out on your own. Now. If you've got the workbook, you've got multiple personas. Here's what I would say. There's multiple cities and multiple, multiple personas. Choose one each and go with it. All right. I added in here just because some people can't decide between two. Um, so they'll fill them both out and then they'll move the journey when they try and get it all figured out. But in the end, let's take one thing and do it from start to finish. Okay. Skip over, if you're in the book, skip over to page 37. Email and email marketing. I'm going to send an email out to everybody that's here. And I'm going to give you the template that I use to organize contacts. 
It is simple. It has, I think, seven different categories, seven or eight. I think seven, though. Don't overcomplicate your contacts going forward because it'll only serve the purpose of making you confused and wanting to give up later. All right? The other thing I'm going to tell you to do is if you have contacts that are well over three or four years old and you have no idea who these people are, start fresh. Now, I just got done telling you at the beginning until they've yelled stop, don't stop. Well, the fact that you weren't communicating with them probably at all means that they probably, at least most of them would have told you to stop by now. So what I'm telling you is create two lists. One's with the, I have no idea who these people are and I'll send them something at some point and start with the people that you know, people in your sphere, people that you just picked up from an open house, people that just responded to an ad, a Facebook post, anything like that. Here's the key. Work from one contact list on your computer and then send it out to the places that you want to send it to, whether it's eEdge, whether it's a CRM you have. At that point, you've got one master list that you're always updating in one place and you know after it's updated, then take it out to the other directions that you need. Because what happens, right? We get 20 lists going and then we're like, ugh, how am I going to consolidate all these? And I'll even go this step further. Even if somebody replies to a Facebook post that you have, whether it be personal, or um, on your business page, get into your contact list and just write down the name. And in the notes section, which is the last field, say they responded to this. You may see over time that the same contacts are responding to the same types of messages and that's your key for a conversation. Wait, so if they respond, yeah. you get their name and you put it where? In, in it, it, the Excel sheet. I, I tell everybody use your computer, not necessarily eEdge, but once it's on your computer where you have physical, tangible proof all the time that you know where it is, it's updated, then put it into some of these marketing type platforms that you'll use to send out different messages to. Problem is, is if you put it immediately into an online type system, then you're going to be, you'll want it on your computer and be like, oh, I don't know, it, and it just becomes a mess. Get it on your computer first, then get it up to some of these other places. Then you know for an absolute fact that your best list is tangible to you on your computer 100% of the time. All right? So we're going to get into a bunch of email marketing, all of that, but um, that's all part of week five. Next page over uh, in your workbook would be page 38. Your marketing assets going forward. These are all of the things that you will use in order to broadcast your videos, to broadcast posts, to get messages out about open houses, anything and everything. I don't expect you to have even 10% of this list at this point. In fact, I'd be surprised if most of you even have maybe 10 check marks on this whole list. That's what this program is about. I'm going to strategically help you to get the pieces in place so that you can build the foundation. What we typically do as agents is we build the house before we build the foundation. And then what happens? The house crumbles because there's not a solid foundation. Okay? This list of marketing assets will give you the proper foundation that will uphold all of the messages that you put out, all of the listings, all the open houses you go to. Everything will have a proper foundation so you'll know that if I'm doing an open house, I need to do this, 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 and this, and I've got the assets in place. You copy here, you paste there, you copy here, you paste there, you print, and you're done. It has a logical flow because everything is ready for you and you know how to use it. A lot of this program is about how to actually use the majority of what's on this list. That's why it's 12 hours long instead of just an hour. I mean already we, we're just cresting an hour and we haven't even got into really much of value when it comes to Facebook and ads and all that. Can you imagine if we tried to shove it all into two hours? It just wouldn't work. 
It's too much. Okay, so for homework, I want you to go through this list and I want you to put check marks on the check boxes of the, the marketing assets that you already have. Even if you think it's wrong, even if you have no idea how to find it again, put a check mark by it so that you know at least where you're at and that we can reflect back to it. At some point, I'll probably pull in smaller groups and just see if everybody has like a common set of things, then what we're going to do with each one of those things. Okay. Page 43. Very important. I'm going to skip. <coughs> Okay, here are the things I recommend that you're going to have to have in order to complete this course. There is really nothing on here that you absolutely have to spend money on. So if you're flat broke, don't worry, it's okay. All right, none of us are made of money. So, um, you know, I tried to include only the things that there was a free option for or something might work better if you were able to spend a little bit of money. So let's go through these. Splice app. Now, the same company that makes it, which is GoPro, everybody knows GoPro, right? You've seen commercials for GoPro. Um, they have a free app called Splice. There's also another one called Quick. Almost, yeah, almost the same app. Um, it could be actually Android versus iPhone. Uh, either way, they work the same. Here's what the app does and it's free. It compiles photos that are on your phone and videos that are on your phone, does a really nice presentation for you, and will put music in the background and you can save it directly to your Facebook page and or directly to YouTube, right from your phone. So let's say you're out at Esposito's Pizza in Matawan and it's your favorite place snap 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 the menu snap the inside walk around the outside one minute compile on your phone send it out to YouTube put the right description on 15 minutes later you're good to go all for free plus your time it's a little bit Animoto I think is like 49 or 50 bucks a month so oh is Animoto's free so you could also use Animoto. Animoto actually has a few extra options because you can overlay text on it. So if you have Animoto, you can use that. Um, A-N-I-M-O-T-O. Animoto. That's the same thing. It's a it's a different. Is it? Do they have the app or just the software or both? No, it's the app. Just okay, the app. so Animoto app. Okay. I used it early on, and I think I had to pay. So I. There's different versions. Okay. All right. So use Animoto. The free version is 20. Yep. Cool. Now, Move AVI is um, if you would prefer to use your, uh, instead of your smartphone, if you would prefer to use your laptop or, um, you know, some sort of Mac PC device, Move AVI is $39 per um, at one time fee. It's software. You load it on your computer and you can actually do a lot more with your slideshows and videos by mixing them together. Super intuitive. There's a quadrillion um, tutorials on YouTube already click by click for Move AVI. That's why I chose that. So, do you have to spend the money? Absolutely not. But if you'd rather work on a computer instead of on your smartphone, that's an option for you. I've never done anything on YouTube. Okay. We're going to totally get into it. We're going to go all the way from setting up the channel all the way to uploading it and how to do it. Yep. It's all part of what you're going to learn. Canva. How many people use Canva here? Oh, man. Yesterday in Jackson, all but one did. So it's amazing. Canva's free. Canva.com. Go sign up. It has templates for everything. So all the cool graphics that you see on Facebook and, and different things like that, Canva has them all and they're for free. They also have premium templates that you can use that are $1. So it's an amazing thing. Um, it's a, basically, it turns you into a graphic designer. It, literally, there's thousands of templates. You fill in your text. You choose pictures that go in the background. A lot of them are stock photos that are free. Um, they're amazing for graphics. 
So, get yourself a Canva account. Bitly. How many of you have heard of Bitly before? Again, just a few. Bitly is a nice um, tool to have. What it does is it takes URL, um, like internet URLs that are this long and it shaves them down to about 10 characters. All right? So, I'll tell you where I use them the most. On Facebook and YouTube posts, I use them almost exclusively because of two reasons. Someone is going to see this big long um, URL that goes over two or three lines. Sometimes Facebook will actually cut it off and then it won't even work. So then you get nothing out of it. So a Bitly one will always work. The other nice thing about Bitly is, is that for every one of those that you use, you can see how many people, it tracks how many people actually clicked the link and went to the place that you want. So when you start doing your YouTube videos, you're using those Bitly things, you can actually see how many times they click the link. Let's say 50 people click a link, but no one ever calls or texts you. You then say, well, it's not the link that's the problem. It's probably my messaging on what they call the landing page or the website or something like that. All right, so that's a whole different problem. So we want to know how many people are actually clicking the things that we want so that we can decipher whether the problem is the link in the post or the post itself or whether it's what they're going to on the, on the outside. Does it let you rename the link? Or you can't there is a paid version where you can make, you can make um, custom names that go in it. But yeah, it, I would use the free one. Mm -hmm. Here's the other place I use it. And don't tell anyone else I said this. <laughs> All right? And by the way, this will go up on YouTube. Um, <laughs> on the back of your business card, the next time that you are printing business cards, take out some of the junk that's on there that will never get you a contact or a lead and do this. Put the, a link to a home value page on the back of your um, card, okay? A lot of us say referrals are, but you know, yeah. Replace that, everyone knows a referral would be greatly appreciated. Replace that with a link to your home value page. Everybody that I've told that, within a month, someone goes to that bit.ly link and, and gets a home value, so. Home value page, I'll get into that a little bit later when we do the ads, but um, like even through RCS, our system, mm -hmm. you have a landing page where somebody can go to it and enter their address and it kicks out an automatic home value for them. It then grabs their information and sends it to you via email. Okay? It's just a way to capture contacts. It's a landing page, right? Yeah, a landing page, yep. Okay, RPR, everybody know what RPR is? I don't have to go through that. It should be the source you use to get home um, uh, CMAs. It's not accurate. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I differ with that. I think RPR, in almost every case that I ever look when something closes, RPR is almost within a couple thousand dollars. No. Especially if it's a five-star value on a home, it is almost always correct. So. Uh, obviously, buyers, we never know with buyers. They could be high, they could be low. But it, it's rare that some, something's it's way off. And, yeah, it could be unusual, and then technology would never be a good source for it. Yeah, you're right. Okay, fast stone capture. This is the one place I'm going to make you spend money. Unless you have a better alternative, that's free. Fast stone capture is, and you can use any other one if you want. It'll be $29. It, allows you to draw a box, or 20, it allows you to draw a box over something that's on your laptop, PC, or computer screen, and it will capture from within that box what's on the screen. Okay, so let's say I've got my full laptop screen, oh, hold on, I'll just do it here. Let's say I just wanted to do this and capture this, it would automatically turn it into a graphic for you. I think Snip tool does that. Snip does too. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yep. Um, again, you're going to have to pay for it because um, here's if, if it's not if it's a free version of something, what I want you to pay for is the ability for it to also capture screen video. 
because what will happen is is that eventually you're going to want to explain something that you're going to want to scroll down your screen for and you would have to overlay multiple images multiple images and it just doesn't work so what you'll end up doing is in the background of your laptop you'll be speaking while you're scrolling on your screen or you'll be telling somebody this is how you pull up a house on my website actually physically show this is how you get to all the first-time home buyers houses on my website and it'll follow your mouse around it'll record it all of that and then you can speak behind it so whatever tool you use make sure that it's got the video capture capability because remember anything that we put out in video is going to rank much higher than anything you put out um, in text uh, Dropbox everybody knows what that is I it, it's not mandatory but it's a nice place to keep everything and because you can put so much on there for free I recommend it if you're going to use the splice or quick um, app it will actually pull all your stuff from Dropbox there as well so let's say your photographer sends everything to you for Dropbox then you can pull it right in and do your your um, tour through that uh, social media accounts we're going to get into uh, people always ask um, where I get printing done I go with the cheap stuff um, next day flyers and Vistaprint I use next day flyers if I'm in a pinch they're in Saddlebrook so I can send something to them at 2 o'clock in the afternoon they'll have it printed that night and I can go pick it up if I need to Saddlebrook's like an hour um, maybe 45 minutes to an hour from here so in the end it's up to you but let's say you wanted postcards or something you know you could certainly send it to them they'll do it overnight and then you can pick it up the next morning for a, a fraction of the cost of what it might be to have it overnighted and all that sort of stuff so express copy is good too is it because they will have it done within hours they do the postage you just download your address list and they send everything out perfect well, so express copy is another one express copy. yep also, I use uprint.com. I've yep. done a lot of work with them, and I, I like the quality of their work, and they have really good prices. Excellent. Uprint is another one. So if you've got a little time and you can submit something online and you've got a little time for it to send out, then, yeah, there's plenty of them out there. Okay. Your iPhone or your smartphone. You don't need some big fancy rig uh, to shoot a video. You just don't. Are smartphones anymore? I don't even know where mine is. Somewhere. Are smartphones anymore? Are actually the cameras on them are more powerful than broadcast cameras were 10 years ago. And it's what? It, most of us get them for free included with our cell plans, right? It's amazing. And some of them even shoot what they call 4K video now, which is amazing. Like, it's off the charts. Just Can broadcast cameras that can't. For the presentation. Yep. Yep, you can use photos anytime. Okay? So, here's the key, and we're going to get into this in week three when I teach you the best way to actually shoot a video if you're going to be on it. The key to using your cell phone for video of any sort would be if you're going to appear, make sure you've got more light coming onto your face than you do behind you. So, if you're in your house, you should be, if this is a window in your house, the camera should be right up against the window looking back at you and your face should be pointed to the outside so that your face is more illuminated than what's behind you. Light in photography and video is everything. The sun is your friend, but in most video, what do we do? We put the sun behind us and then what happens? You can't see your face because everything behind you is the brightest part. So what you've got to do is you've got to be either looking into the sun with the camera here or have it off 45 degrees on one side or the other. All right? Yes? I was told by a photographer friend that it's slightly overcast that day. You're not squinting, but the picture quality is really good. Perfect. I shot weddings for five years, 200 weddings. And when I woke up on a wedding day and saw clouds, I was like, thank you. Because <laughs> <laughs> the biggest challenge in wedding photography, not that I need to get in this, but the biggest challenge in wedding photography is you've got this big, 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 bright white wedding dress and this dark, dark, dark tux. There is no way to blend those and make them look amazing. 
because one is so bright and the other is so dark. So when you wake up and it's cloudy, you should be out shooting everything because there's no contrast anywhere. Every, the light is even. Also, if you can shoot in the early morning or the late evening, it's called the golden hours, where it's just a little more pleasing for most of us. And um, if you can, you're not squinting at that point, you get this nice golden glow. You know, we all look like Fabio then, right? So, <laughs> all right? He's overrated. Yeah, he is. Yeah, forget I said that. Okay. Um, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Amazon. Um, Amazon is your best friend for a couple things. If you're going to shoot video, um, I recommend using a tripod because people get dancing all over the place and then it's almost unwatchable. So if you can, put it on a tripod. Amazon also has adapters for tripods where you can, I should have brought mine, it, you can lift it up and insert your phone into the adapter so that it fits on a tripod. Together they sell kits, they're like $27. So if you're gonna be serious about standing in front and, and doing a video, you can press go on the camera and then you don't have to be holding it, you don't have to worry about anything. You can kind of frame it all before you do it. Get yourself one of those. Also, if you're going to be talking on the video, invest in one of these, which is a lavalier microphone. You can get the wired ones that plug right into your iPhone and they're $12. Here's the thing about video and especially audio. People will watch a jumpy video with good audio. They won't watch a video that's got amazing quality but poor audio. They'll be 10 seconds in on the audio and be like, I can't listen to this anymore, I'm out. But there's jumpy videos everywhere. I mean, the whole Blair Witch Project, right? Remember that? Like you almost got a headache when watching that, but you watch the whole thing. But if the audio was bad, you would be knocking on the window at the screen saying, what's wrong with the audio? Okay? So, another thing. Go through those. Again, you don't have to buy any of that stuff if you don't think you're ever going to appear on a video. But if you want to step it up a bit, invest in some of that. You'll spend maybe $40 total on all that and you'll be good to go. If you have a DSLR, which is like a nicer camera, that um, shoots photos as well as video, I recommend using it over top of your um, iPhone or instead of your iPhone, just because a lot of DSLRs, you can kind of fog out what's in the background so it looks a little more cinematic. But it's, if you don't have one, don't run out and buy one, okay? I'm just saying if you have it, sometimes the light, the, the contrast ends up being a little bit more professional. All right, so. In the last half hour, I want to talk about Facebook pages. So if you're in your book, skip over to 48. Here's how we win at Facebook. All right, it's going to take a little bit of setup, but I promise it's going to make your life much easier. For each of the cities, in each of the, pers in the personas that you use, I want you to create a separate Facebook page for them. So, um, I have a Facebook page out there called Middletown Home Values. Anything that I create or want to post that has anything to do with home values in Middletown goes directly on that page. I've done hundreds, literally, of um, home value ads all over the country for all sorts of people. When we use the Realtor page as opposed to the home values page, I can't even explain to you that how the stats go down when they see the Realtor sending the home value ad. Okay, it, It's abysmal which means in Facebook terms that instead of maybe um, a dollar and a quarter lead costs, it's like six or seven dollar lead costs. Simply because it looks like a realtor is trying to give me a home value. Now, we all have to, as realtors, disclose that we're realtors. So you can title the page so that when people see it, 
they'll see Middletown home values and then at the end you can put your name and, and agency and you'll be in compliance you'll also in the Facebook cover which again we're going to get into this later I'll, I'll show you some covers and if you use Canva I'll share a template with you you have to have your logo on there you've got to have all the appropriate information on there that keeps you in compliance if you don't they're going to start tightening up with that. I think Sally just sent something out last week, right, about even um, some of the new officers around are tightening up on business cards, even. Yeah. All right? The idea is, is that we want to stay in compliance because there's no reason not to. We're not trying to trick anyone. We're just trying to increase the value that we get when we actually post something. Now, there's also some extra pages that I want to go through with you. So we've got our main real estate page. If you look at the top in the checkbox, we've got our main real estate page, which is your name, real estate, and the brand name, which would be KW for you guys. Okay? If you have a page that's um, something crafty, that if someone were to try and look for your name in the search bar and not find it based on what your page name is, you need to change it or you need to start a new one. Okay? If, if you call yourself the, the hunky real estate agent, no one will ever go to the search bar and type in the hunky real estate agent. They're going to look for your name. So use your name. You're not tricking anyone by telling them that you, know, you sell all luxury homes. People are going to go, they're going to, for lack of a better term, Google on Facebook your name. Your name needs to appear. Yes. Are you saying that we should create separate business pages? Yep. Down? Separate business pages. So next, I'm also going to have you do um, your name and then a did you know page. Anything that you present to either a persona or around the town, just a fun <coughs> fact or a post will go on your did you know page. These pages go off the charts because you're not trying to sell anything. You're just trying to get engagement for things. Just fun facts. I'm sorry, I didn't hear her. Is each one of these checkboxes yes. a separate page? Yes. Yep, okay. definitely. So yeah, no, you're going to have all sorts of pages. Okay? Now, the next one is optional, but I recommend it. Where is, and then your name. This is also another fun one. You like hiking, you like biking, you like going out to eat. You post then in that type of page. Right? Now we get into the real estate pages. Just listed in. What do you think is going to go in the just listed in page? All the new listings. Wait, I don't understand. You're going to make these pages? Yep, you have to make each one of these pages and post to it. Okay? just listed best page ever if you're gonna not do any of these other pages make sure you do just listed in the city you've chosen and any new listing that comes up from our KW group especially if you see somebody that's got a coming sooner or just listed and it hits in the city make sure you post get their permission obviously and in the in the text of the post we say you know we'd like to be able to show buyers it, it's very rare that from within our KW that no one will let you co-market their listings. It's just rare. Okay? Anytime it fits, it should go. See? They like that point. <laughs> okay? Homes for sale in your city. That's when something's no longer just listed. It's now for sale in. Okay? And I've got uh, three different things there. Featured homes for, let's say downsizers. Let's say your persona is a downsizer. Where would you do featured homes for downsizers? What communities? Exactly. We're not steering anybody because they're 55 and over communities. <laughs> okay? First time home buyers. They can only afford certain towns in our area, right? So we're going to feature listings that are in those towns. So not only are we locked in on a city that's our specialized city, we're also locked in on our persona and we're trying to feed them 
the best listings for that. Now, somebody might say, well, I really feel like that is steering. Well, it's not. Because if someone came to you and said, hey, can you set me up on an MLS search for this city and this price range? It's the same thing. So we're not steering anybody anywhere. We're just featuring the properties that are in there. So yes, and then I'll get to you. Uh, yeah, I actually, um, I just recently passed the uh, test. And I think it's if you just pretty much showing them everything they're um, qualified for. Yeah. So it might seem like it's steering, but really, if they're financially qualified for any of those options, exactly. It's steering at all. These are just your favorite homes for a first time home buyer, and it could be for anybody. But it, that's exactly right. Yes? So, how frequently can we update these pages? As much as you want. That's and I'm going to get into this right before we close. I'm going to make you guys decide something. But um, I would say this is that. It, especially because we have a thousand agents in this office there's no reason for a lot of these just listed and homes for sale in pages that something's gonna hit almost weekly in the city that you choose post it especially if you use RCS it everything's pulled together for you it builds the post for you all you have to do is copy and paste it over I mean it takes two minutes at the most okay before we go, I'm going to tell you how much time you should dedicate to marketing each week. Are you doing this for us? Nope. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless you're paying me for everything. <laughs> okay. Living in your city. Now, what, what type of content would you put in the living in the city? Festivals. Festivals, events, restaurants. Restaurants. Yeah. Shopping. Exactly. Yeah. Parks. Parks. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Again, anything you think your buyers that are coming into that city would want to know, how awesome would it be instead of a link on the back of your card to just random nothing, say, hey, if you're a first time home buyer and you're looking in such and such, click here. Here's my Facebook page on living in Manalapan. It's great. Prove your value by actually proving your value. Right? You see all the rest of them. Now, to Nancy's point, seems like a lot of work. But the idea is you get to control it all. So if you want to go gangbusters with it, two hours a day, you can. If you want to dedicate one day a month to it, do that. But the idea is that I'm setting you up with the foundation that will encourage you to actually come up with this content and have a place for it to go. And if you decide to then broadcast it out via ads, that it looks like it's coming from something of interest other than just you as the realtor. And I, you are all lovely people, but every other realtor outside this room is not a lovely person. Okay, they're pushy. Just kidding. But the idea is, listen, as an industry, we all kind of have a bad reputation, right? Because some people ruin it for everybody because they're pushy. So as soon as you come across as the realtor, they think you ought to automatically want to push something on them. I'm helping you to get the content out there, which is your intent, without seeming like you're shoving anything down their throat. That's why we create all these pages. So quick thing. Though. Yep. So even when you do something like living in, yep. you still have to have your like your real estate. Absolutely. Right. So so when we set these up, right. you're going to have to put, um, if this is your office, you'll put the address for here, the phone number for here. Um, in the cover photo, you're going to have the KW logo. You're going to have your compliant information. Everything's compliant straight, straight up, start to finish. Your picture will actually be the profile photo. Everything's compliant. Start Do you the have a sample of this? Any of these? Yeah, already? I'll start a next class. I'll show you. I have, I don't know, sixty <laughs> Facebook pages probably. So yeah. With the home feature, the feature homes or whatever, we yep. just can't pull them off the MLS. We need permission from several listeners. Yes. So, so what's now, the difference between that and just sharing somebody's post on Facebook? So if you share somebody else's post on Facebook, it looks terrible on Facebook because then it looks like a separate box in inside of a separate box and it, it just looks messy. But as far as permission goes, I mean? As far as permission goes, um, so long as you have the permission, you can create a post. Or if you want, you can share it. 
you right. share button so you figure you have permission. You, could, you can do that too. You know, in the end, I'd rather see you call somebody, get their permission, and just create a brand new post for the page instead of sharing it across. Um, and especially if you're going to get into advertising, that you have to have it as a native post, not a shared post. Here's, here's what one of the people that um, is local is doing. She wants to, um, to recruit agents. So she's going in her strategic city, and she's going to broker opens. And she's creating a relationship with the realtors, and she's helping promote their, their listings, almost all of which are not KW. And she's got at least three people interested right now in possibly talking to her about KW because she's actually brought people as buyers off of a broker open to that because of some of the marketing she's doing. OK? So How do you know you could do that? She's, got, she's got their permission. And right in the post, Oftentimes, those people are commenting, saying, hey, let's get this thing sold, or thanks for coming by my broker open. So, so now there's a relationship. All right. In the post, would she not have to mention listing? Absolutely. Right. Listing offered by. And you always say in a post, if you're, if you're doing someone else's listing, you always say, I'm looking to bring buyers to this home. It, here's the best features. Boom, 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 boom. So long as you say something to the effect of, that I'm, I want to bring buyers here, you're not at all claiming that it's not your listing. And if you go the extra step and say listing presented by, even better. You know, you're acknowledging it's not yours. You know, we're all really protective of our listings, but in the end, and rightly so, but in the end, you know, let's just get the thing sold. Let's get the exposure out there. That's what the MLS is all about. It, Zillow steals all our stuff all the time. You know? You're clicking I, I so, click yes anyway, right? Yeah. Put in a listing. Exactly. So uh, the idea is just get it exposed and use it to create relationships and contact acquisitions. All right? Now, we're going we're gonna to stop there, but I want to go over two, uh, two things with you before we're done. Okay? I want to differentiate one quick thing. Um, in case some of you weren't in the uh, in the classes that we did early in the, the spring. I want to talk about the difference between a contact versus a lead. In almost every industry, we refer to somebody that comes into our system as someone that we would do business with as a lead. I'm going to debunk that for you for this reason. Because every time we say that we have a lead, we have tremendous expectations of that person, right? We'll say, oh, we just got 50 leads. And then none of them work out and you're like, oh, I can't convert a single lead. And then we just mentally, we just check out. It's like, I have all these leads, but I can't convert them, all right? Here's what I want you to reprogram your brain to. Anybody that initially comes into your system that you have not spoken to or texted back and forth with is a contact. Contacts should have zero expectation. Okay? Expect none of your contacts to ever work out until you work them into a conversion. A lead should be defined as someone that's ready to take action or someone that's told you the timeline of their ready action. So someone may respond to you in a home value ad and say, well, I'm thinking about selling in 12 months. They are a lead, not a contact because they told you that they'll be ready in 12 months. Now your job is to convert that lead over the next 12 months. If they haven't told you that there's a timeline established, they are not a lead yet. Here's the reason I say this. When they become a lead, you should expect to convert 50% of them. And if you're not converting 
then we need to up our game. We need to be better with our scripts. We need to have better landing pages. We need to have better emails and texts. 50% of anybody that tells you the timeline that they're on to buy or sell, you should be able to convert them. So long as, at least at an open house, if they say, oh yeah, I'm looking to buy in three months, but I'm already represented by another realtor. Uh, obviously, they're a contact. 50% of the people that you acquire that have told you they have a timeline, you should expect at least 50% of those people to convert. Now, how on earth are we going to do that? Because our conversion rates are probably around 2 to 3%. That's what this program is all about. It's about, and this is what it leads to right now, the last point I want to make is this. Marketing is... it. At worst case scenario, a part-time job. Okay, how many of you know Tom Ferry? I just saw a video for him this morning. A guy came to him and said, I wanna, I wanna um, sell 120 homes next year. And Tom Ferry said, well, how many do you sell now? He said, 12. And he said, okay. You ready for my answer? And he said, I'll do whatever it takes. I've got motivation for this, that, this, that. Tom Ferry said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to work for me. He said to the realtor, you're going to work for me, Tom Ferry, from 7.30 in the morning until noon, five days a week. I'm going to be your boss. And you're going to do everything I tell you to do between 7.30 and 12 as if I'm, I'm your boss. You're going to do expired calls for 45 minutes. You're going to do FISBO calls for 45 minutes. You're going to cover your sphere for 30 minutes. You're going to do follow-up. You're going to update your CRM. You're going to post on Facebook. You're going to do everything I tell you to do between these hours. And at the end, you're going to sell 120 homes. And he said, I'll do it. A year later, guess how many homes he sold? 127. Wow. Now, this guy wasn't afraid to pick up the phone and cold call the heck out of lists. Guess how many people he probably got yelled at? <laughs> A lot. Okay? Here's what I want you to get in the habit, change your mindset, okay? To say, if I'm going to succeed at all of this stuff, it's going to be a part-time job. So when Nancy says something like, well, I don't have time for this, I need to pay somebody, that's fine. Because if you couldn't do this between 7.30 and 12, you would need an admin, so pay somebody to do it. That's when you prospect. So at that point, you need to treat this as any marketing. Whether it's prospecting, whether it's anything you do, you have to treat it like a part-time job. Monday through Friday, I am going to dedicate four hours to this. I can guarantee you that if you dedicated four hours to doing some of the things that we just talked about this morning, plus additionally what we're going to talk about, four hours a day. <laughs> you would probably acquire so many contacts that you would end up you would end up succeeding. Are you talking about the marketing? I'm talking about the marketing, I'm talking about mix of prospecting, all of that. There's a lot of people, listen, there's some of you that I know that don't pick up the phone in here because you just don't want to. That's okay. If you don't want to pick up the phone, then you're gonna have to do something else. You should say to yourself, I need to fill four hours a day getting business. And if I'm not, then I shouldn't complain that there's no business. I mean, can you imagine walking into a regular job and saying, you know what, I look good in this desk. I'm just going to sit here. I had that job. Yeah. <laughs> See where you are six months later. You know, you're one car wreck away from losing your job. So, here's the thing, and I make my coaching clients outside of you guys do this. 
but I tell them the same thing, something very similar. I cut it down to two hours a day. But if you're not doing at least two hours a day to some of these very simplistic things, you shouldn't expect results. Nothing in this industry is remotely close to um, easy. The idea is, is that when, you, when you've got a plan in place and you know you can use the hours that are, are best for you to do your marketing, you're going to get the best out of yourself. My hours are 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. I get everything done. I, I wanted to write a book on Facebook marketing just for sellers. 106 pages, I just did it um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Done. It's another book I can put out and sell. Did I need to create another book right now? No, I'm like off the charts busy. But here's the thing, is that my hours from four to six, four to six thirty, four to seven even, if I don't have something planned, then I need to do something then. Because if I get out of the habit of working in those hours, then I'll just stop. So what did I do? I just created another book. So. What happened to sleep? I was yeah. Just ask them, what do you, sleep? <laughs> you know, I have the best routine ever. I, I read to my daughter at, at 8.30. We have a little daddy-daughter time. I'm off to bed, 9 o'clock. I don't watch TV because I don't really like it. I think the programming out there is just trash. So I don't watch it. I don't need it. So that makes it such that I can work up at 4 a.m. I run downstairs, I make my coffee, and I sit down at the computer, and three hours later, I've accomplished what I needed to accomplish for the day. If it wasn't a planned event for me every single day, it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. Now, there's plenty of my clients that say, hey, my best hours are between 9.30 at night and midnight. God bless you. You know, I'm snoring by then. Mm -hmm. But, but that's marketing. You're not making phone calls, obviously. No. That hour. Yeah, you can't, you can't do that then. No, you get arrested. <laughs> if nothing else, there'll be restraining orders against you. But here's the thing. I think you all get it. Even if you started with an hour, how many of you this week have spent one hour marketing your business each day for five days in a row? Good. Okay. How many of you have spent two hours? How many of you have spent three? See, we're almost all done. If you spent four hours a day, five days a week, marketing your business, you would not be sitting in this class right now. I guarantee you. Because you'd be out there crazy. You'd be building a team by now is what would happen. And I would encourage you. If this, if this entire room was empty by this time next year, I'd be so happy. Because I'd know you're all doing exactly what you need to do. And I'm, I'm certainly not accusing anybody of anything because I also know there's plenty of you in here that are busy people. And you're actually doing business, which is wonderful. I think you could probably double your business if you spent a little bit more time marketing and doing some of the things even that don't cost money.